Hey guys, Dr. Sean, Gallagher Performance. Today, offering a little bit more insight into what we're gonna be discussing with the FRAA bat, a Cooper Sound baseball team in regards to management of the throwing athlete. Interestingly enough, ever since this was shared on our social media last week, we've got some interest from other local teams, organizations about bringing us in to provide some sort of value in terms of uh, care plans, management strategies to keep these young athletes healthy. So great for parents, coaches, and players alike to be in attendance for. Uh, so if we can look at the reality of no two shoulders are really gonna be similar when it comes to throwing, but from a research standpoint, we can understand that there's gonna be one or two adaptations that occur at the shoulder and even elbow because of throwing. That's We're gonna see increased range of motion and we're gonna see decreased range of motion. So we're gonna have athletes that either get hypermobile or hypermobile, more range of motion or some that are going to develop stiffness and tightness in, like I said, shoulder or the elbow. And they're going to acquire different plans, different care strategies to keep them healthier in the long term. So if we're looking at more of a hypermobile athlete, we need to make sure that we're doing some stabilization strategies for the shoulder, for their spine, their hips, their core, um, making sure they have good core stabilization, good control of the shoulder blade, that they're maintaining proper uh, congruency of the ball and socket during internal and external rotation of the throwing motion. Uh, whereas if athlete gets stiffer, we need to make sure maybe we're implementing some manual therapy work because they're going to benefit big time from that. They might need more of a mobility strategy to help improve the range of motion, not only at the shoulder, but also more so maybe uh, more commonly what you see is range of motion issues at the spine and even the hips. Um, the other thing we're going to talk about is making sure that we're building uh, appropriate warm-ups um, that aren't feeding into things that are already problematic, meaning we see things in the shoulder such as increased laxity because of throwing. Well, a lot of times in warm-ups we start to see stretching or in care plans in general that incorporate stretching, but maybe why we want to re reconsider that because if we're already developing laxity increased range of motion within the front of the shoulder, if we're taking bands or utilizing a partner to stretch us, say, back into external rotation or even extension, why this might be adding more insult to injury when we consider that a lot of those anterior shoulder structures, be it from ligaments, uh, tendons, start to develop more inflammation, irritation, labrum takes a beating. This is why we see tendonitis, bursitis, rotator cuff issues labral issues, and then even going down into the elbow where we get more valgus stress or medial elbow stress on the ulnar collateral ligament and how that potentially could feed into Tommy John candidates because we do see the incident of Tommy John surgery is rising in the youth populations, uh, which is frankly something that you never saw years ago. Um, so building in proper warm-up care strategies for these younger athletes, likewise, helping them understand the importance of time off and why time off is gonna be valuable from a longevity standpoint and why that's advocated by many sports medicine experts from around the country. Uh, so going through that, gonna go through some individualized considerations for these throwing athletes, depending on, again, how the shoulder responds, what they can do to keep uh, their mechanics on par so that they can stay injury free and enjoy a, uh, a healthy competitive baseball season uh, so thanks for listening guys uh, hope this was valuable to you and more to come thanks for listening